after game after game, and I've never played any of the Witcher games. It makes me think there's so many games up there I haven't played. Am I really a gamer? My name is Oli, welcome to my channel where I'm going to be watching all of the cinematic trailers for the Witcher games, and I'm going to be giving my expert opinion on what's happening in the plot. Okay, this one I'm a little bit scared of. The Witcher has some pretty die-hard fans, and I'm gonna get roasted. Just remember, when I die, I want to be cremated, not buried, so please roast me in the comments below. That is acceptable. Before we get into the video, my name is Oli. I'm a gamer, game collector, a game enthusiast, and I've been playing video games my whole life. And the best thing about playing video games is being able to connect with everybody in the gaming community. That's why I look forward to reading all of your comments and nice messages that you send me. But another way I connect with gamers around the world is through Project Z. Project Z allows you to connect with other gamers from around the world with similar interests. In the app, you can access rooms specifically for your favorite video games. I happen to join the Left 4 Dead room, Pokemon, and there's even a room for us retro gamers. There you can chat directly with other gamers and also share some fun gifts. Another cool feature on Project Z is Meet. Meet automatically pairs you with anybody on the Project Z app. Once you initially pair with that person, you have 180 seconds to decide whether you want to continue the conversation or whether you want to move on. Also, if you need help with your conversation like me, I love how they have the option for conversation starters to ignite other topics to chat about. They have both a text and voice meet option. Choose whatever you are comfortable with. Use my code, YOLILI, once you sign up and let's chat on Project Z. Thanks to Project Z for sponsoring today's video. There's a few things I know about The Witcher. First off, it was based off of a set of novels that I never read. <laughs> the second thing is that they made a television adaption, which I never watched. <laughs> and the third thing is that the main character is this dude with white hair. That's all I know. I don't even know if The Witcher refers to the dude with white hair or whether it refers to maybe an almighty witch. We will find out in the video. All right, let's jump into the video. I've taken a lot of feedback from some of my previous videos and it was clear I didn't do a really good job at sourcing the videos and also putting the videos in a chronological timeline according to what's happening in the game versus the release date. So I spent a little bit more time on this. Feel free to let me know below if I've totally screwed up, which is, I mean, it's understandable. I've never been exposed to any Witcher game before. Anyways, let's get into it. Wish me luck. Wish me lots of luck. <laughs> let's go. Okay, as always, I'm starving. <laughs> Nothing new here. So today I have a plethora of things. I have a fruit shake. Yeah, gotta get your fruits in. And then I got this, uh, <laughs> it looks disgusting. It's actually not it's great. It's dumplings, meat, and sauce. <laughs> I wouldn't even try to tackle what it is. So yeah, you're probably gonna see me eating this. I'm always so hungry because I usually film these right after I work out at the gym. And uh, yeah, I just don't get a chance to eat anything so hungry on my last video my stomach grumbled really loud and that was kind of embarrassing but anyways let's get into it so the first one is uh gwent rogue mage and uh i think this one sits on the chronological timeline the earliest so this is my attempt at doing better centuries before Geralt and the other witchers roamed the continent the conjunction of the spheres brought endless monstrosities into the world. In a bid to survive the onslaught, humankind sought a way to fight back. Okay, and so thus, a war waging. witchers came to be. Okay, so my first question has been answered. What is this, a card game? Is this a mobile game? <laughs> okay, so there's wizards, monsters. A 
Okay. Interesting. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad I started with this. Okay, it is a mobile game. Boo! Okay, I've learned a few things in this mobile game trailer. Uh, boo, mobile gaming sucks. Okay, so I it answered a few of my earlier questions. I didn't know what the witcher was. I thought it could have been a witch or it could have been the dude with white hair. It sounds as though that there's a war waging in this world and the war is between humans versus monsters. And it was caused by the conjunction of the spheres, which I'm still trying to unpack right now. I think this trailer doesn't really talk about it that much. It could be spheres. Does that mean the worlds? Because worlds are spheres. I don't know. We'll figure that out. But in order to battle the monsters that uh, came from this event, the humans, they ended up creating the witchers. So I'm going to take that the witchers are um, their creation or their strategy to battle back on the monsters. But technically, I mean, I'm thinking a witcher is just a mercenary that is well equipped to kill the monsters. So you know, I don't know if they've gone through training. I don't know if they have special skills. I don't know. We'll figure that out. But they did mention Gerald. I don't know if Gerald's the main character. I'm going to say it is. Yeah, he's the main character. Who is a witcher? That's what I've learned in this trailer so far. I don't know who the dude is with the magic, the magician. Uh, we'll probably figure out who he is in the upcoming trailers. Okay, we are moving on to another mobile game. The Witcher Crimson Tale. I think this is next in the chronological timeline. Boom, mobile gaming. What do I, what? That was it? <laughs> the hell do I make out of that? <laughs> I almost have to rewatch it again. I need my glasses. That's what I need. <laughs> that was so pixelated. Okay, here's my <laughs> expert opinion on that one. Oh, that's a rough one. First off, um, the scenes between the mobile, the, the gameplay were just way too fast. I couldn't, couldn't really decipher it. But it looks like our main white haired dude, I'm going to go on a limb and say he's Gerald right now. He's starting to battle some of the monsters. I saw a bat. I saw a werewolf. He mains a sword, but I also think he himself has some sort of magical abilities because he did some like green lightning string thing. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Uh, it is mobile gaming and it looks like really old mobile gaming. So maybe this is back. I don't know. 20. When did this come out? I don't think it says uh, or I didn't write down. Probably. I don't know. Early 2000s. I'm going to say no. Wait, early 2000 phones didn't have that gaming capability. That was totally like snake and stuff. So I'm going to say maybe like 2010. I'm going to say anyways. Yeah. So we're learning a little bit more about our boy Gerald and uh, he's uh, fucking shit up. <laughs> he's just doing his thing. He's fighting some monsters. Okay, uh, that one didn't give us too much. Let's move on to Thronebreaker. That's the next one. I think I'm skipping two, and I think it's because they're not canon. Uh, I'm skipping Price of Neutrality and Side Effects. I think those are just some side games, so... Let's jump into Thronebreaker. Mother, what does betray mean? Well, it's when someone you trust, sometimes someone you love, Stabs you in the back when you least expect it. And then you she looks like a witch. Or sorry, a queen. And your heart is broken. And 
and with much strength and great determination, lift yourself up again. But when you do, nothing can stop you. So it looks like they're going to war with a I won't have a town. I know, my son. I know. Thronebreaker. So he betrays her. <laughs> that was a lie. Okay, this one, I don't know if, okay, wait, let, actually, let me back up. The main protagonist of this game is a queen. And I think the person who actually betrays the queen is her son. Although I did notice her son and her bear different crests. But at the end, when they showed um, like the logo and stuff like that, they had her crest, which is a line, and they had a slash go, oops, they had a slash go through it. So I think that signifies that uh, her house was ripped into two. And I feel as though she's going to battle with her son, who's that other neighboring castle. Uh, They're going to war with them. So I think she's trying to settle the beef, <laughs> for lack of a better term. <laughs> She's trying to handle the situation, okay? What's interesting, though, was she was a captive for some time. Um, so I don't know if her son maybe betrayed her while they were kind of one nation. I almost think in the past when she was a captive, there was a guy who came in the frame who looked like Gerald. He stabbed the guy behind her after she got her face sliced. I almost feel as though he maybe saved her because... He I don't know if, if I think it's him or not, but he kind of looks like him. I, I don't know. I haven't seen enough of him yet in the trailers to know. But he probably saved her once upon a time. And then now she's getting revenge on her son who betrayed her. I think actually where I'm kind of going with this is although we started off between a war with monsters and humans, it's starting to expand a little bit more politically where there's also wars with kingdoms. Okay, I, I kind of like where this is going. Uh, let's move on to the next one. We, oh wait, sorry, I forgot to mention. She has this red ribbon. This red ribbon was around her wrist in most of the scenes, but she also had this red ribbon that would kind of transition from her wrist to her sword. So I feel maybe that's her signature thing, but we'll kind of see what role or significance that red ribbon plays in the future. Okay, so we are moving on to The Witcher 1. I think this one's going to be exciting. I feel as though there's going to be some significance I can pull out of this trailer. Ooh, okay, <laughs> let's go on. <laughs> His name was Geralt of Rivia. He was a witcher, a professional monster slayer. I got that right. An unusual contract to lift the curse that held a monarch's daughter. It was enough to spend the night with the princess, dusk till dawn. Ooh, so he got if some action. If only she were not a deadly beast, a striga. Ah. The traitor responsible for the curse became the bait. He has like this Kratos style chain. What happened to him? He turned into a skeleton and then he turned back.
Are his eyes glowing? I can't really tell. Oh, he's using him as bait. <laughs> that's what you get. I don't know what you did, but that's what you get. So that's a monster. But I wonder if it's a monster or a human transforming. Because it has clothes on. Kratos chains. Okay. I it happened so fast. I didn't see what happened. <laughs> Oh, so he's a magician. He used fear attack. What's going on? <laughs> Did he suck him into a different dimension? Oh. Uh. I don't really know what happened there. He's almost like, t he's almost toying with him. What is going on? This is where the monster came out of, right? This guy just like shotting down these little vials. This is where he sleeps? happening <laughs> Oh okay I knew it was a human Oh, 
I wasn't expecting that. Though gravely wounded, the Witcher lifted the curse and gained fame. The world changed with the coming of the Great War. The time of the sword and axe. The time of disdain. Geralt of Rivia disappeared, all but forgotten. But that's another story. Which we shall watch very soon. Okay, how do I start this one off? Okay, I'm going to say... Actually, at the beginning when they referred to uh, the princess uh, or the daughter of the monarch, I actually thought that there were some ties to the previous trailer with um, Thronebreaker with that lady. But it doesn't seem like there are ties because this lady clearly has red hair. I did have a prediction during the trailer where I thought the beast was actually human because the beast was wearing some rags. So it looks like that came to fruition. That was true. Uh, and she was cursed by the, the guy who was kind of bounded up, um, who he let loose as bait. So that was really interesting. I also think that when Geralt had done that kind of like, I don't know, Kamehameha light beam thing, he was actually exercising the beast uh, versus kind of attacking the beast. So I think that was his way of lifting the curse from her. So that to me tells me that Gerald has some sort of magical abilities on top of his combat abilities, which could be a, a common trait of the witchers or maybe it is a unique trait of him as a witcher. I don't know if the witchers are a clan or whether they are just a group of people yet. I think I'm going to start to dig a bit deeper into this. I'm also thinking about the first trailer I watched where there was that magician dude. Maybe he was also a witcher because that's where they start to talk about um, like the introduction of the witchers and how they kind of protected people and so forth. Now let's kind of push our attention to Geralt. So Geralt is an interesting character. He has snake eyes or cat eyes. <laughs> And he has a scar down one eye, which confirms that he was actually the guy who um, saved the queen in the Thronebreaker trailer. Interesting, that was him. He kind of looks a bit different, but I think the scar kind of is his staple. Um, yes, we already confirmed he can control magic. And he's addicted to these little vials. I don't know what these vials are, but I'm going to go off of a whim here and say that the vials are actually, um, I don't know if this is true or not, but I have a feeling that they control sunrise and moonrise because when he drank the vial the first time, I mean, he kind of like cracked out a little bit, but the sun fell rather fast. And I don't know if that was just a time lapse of the trailer or whether that was um, kind of like an effect of the vial. The reason I think it controls those things was when he was in the tomb at the end, he ingested another vial, which didn't give him the same like cracked out reaction. <laughs> I don't know how else to call it. But he had a little hourglass or a minute glass, I think it was. It wasn't even an hourglass. It was a minute glass that he put on his chest. The time elapsed and it was daytime again. So I feel as though there's some sort of connection between, like I said, sunrise, moonrise around those vials. At the end, they did talk about him disappearing. So I still kind of think that he's, I don't know, some sort of missionary. You know, he's kind of one of those people who show up to do a job. And once the job's done, they kind of wash their hands clean and move on to the next. So that's why he wasn't seen of after that mission, but his impact was still remembered. And it could just be because, you know, as a missionary, you moved on to another place. And given the medieval times, there wasn't really a way for us to stay connected. You can't add him on Instagram or anything and see what he's doing tomorrow. So uh, that's kind of what I think that last part meant. They did mention a few things that I don't think they explained in this. So the Great War, the time of word and word and acts did i write that wrong i probably did and time of disdain so we'll probably learn a little bit more of those in the upcoming trailers okay we are now moving on to uh the witcher oh the witcher 2 assassins of kings that's the next one so we're moving straight into the witcher 2 okay witcher 2 let's do this let's do this Debut developer. We get it. It's a great game. 
There goes 25 seconds of this trailer already. Non-humans, I have an offer. I can add several more heads to this one, all crowned. Go on. I want no gold, and have no interest in a killer's fame. Why do you wish them dead, then? It's a long story. A story too long for a trailer. Prepare to fight! And ready yourself to avenge your fallen king! King or beggar, what's the difference? One, one less. I'm no avenger of orphans. Is that the same no girl from the other? Friar. He I'm looks so different. He looks more human now. Before he looked like a, a vampire or something. Okay, let me think where I'm going to go with this one. Um, maybe I didn't really wrap up the first story. I mean, I talked a little bit about what was happening in the trailer. But I almost feel as though when Gerald had disappeared, the game itself was about... Gerald re-emerging um, and I think maybe that girl with red hair that he saved the demon uh, or uh, cursed lady um, maybe she sought him out and they I think they're like a love interest now which yay romance I like romance <laughs> um, so yeah they're together I think because they were like naked in the water together so anyways here's kind of my thoughts on what's happening in The Witcher 2 so I think in The Witcher 1 you obviously learn a little bit more about Geralt where he's from a little bit more about the witchers in general he said a few interesting things I mean he said he's not an avenger for orphans maybe what that means is witchers are orphans maybe they're raised or they start targeting kids from the orphans i still don't know if it's a clan or not he also said he's not an executioner for hire which means my whole thoughts about mercenaries are totally crossed out because mercenaries are usually hired to kill so i think he really just does it because like this is his calling he you know wants to be a witcher when he grows up <laughs> type of thing so i think in the previous game you know he obviously saved some monarch's daughter which is his love interest but I think he starts to obviously roam a bit more of the lands and I think that's kind of where he landed where he is today where it sounds as though that there was possible attempts to assassinate the king there which eventually I think it went through because there was some words about um I think when the guy was kind of rallying his troops he's like your king has fallen so I think eventually his king the king ended up getting slain but because the king fell I think the king was probably the king of the north that's now where shit's going down so i think that scene with the the bald dude and the other dude with the eye patch you know there's always a guy with an eye patch they're on the monster side and they're starting to cause some sort of rebellion to overthrow the north now that the king has been taken down which i think is all part of the larger plot so maybe that gentleman with the eye patch is actually the assassin who ended up actually axing down the king and now they're kind of raging their wars to go up north which is where the witcher is saying okay this is my calling you know th this is what i wanted to be when i grew up i want to be someone who kills monsters so he's now going to the north to try and face the battles against the monsters um i think his love interest is coming with him because maybe she's like oh this guy like literally saved me and he's hot he's cute you know he has a scar over his eye he's dangerous 
Uh, so she probably wants to accompany him. But I feel as though there's a little bit more magic that I've seen in this trailer. So uh, I don't know if maybe he has magic or he's with some teammates that has magic. Um, so anyways, I think that's kind of the direction this is going. So if I could say the synopsis of this game specifically, it's really protecting the North from the monsters. And I feel as though this becomes kind of like one of those milestone wars in history that they talk about. We still don't really know much about the Great War, the time of Ward and Axe, I think I wrote that wrong, uh, and the time of Disdain. I don't know if this war falls into any of those. I mean, the title itself, Assassins of the Kings. Uh, yeah. I, I can't help but feel that there's still a political piece I'm missing of this. Because, I mean, this is the medieval times. There's a lot of wars for territorial gain. So I don't know if it's another territory kind of assassinating or trying to send assassination attempts to the king in order to overthrow them and claim their land. Um, but right now I'm just going to go off of a women's say it's, it's still the monsters. Okay, we are going on to the next one, which is... The Witcher Adventure Game. <laughs> I think I may have glimpsed at this one when I was downloading all of the video files. And anyways, we'll give it a try. If we don't like it, then well, we don't like it. In a world torn by strife and injustice, where a multitude of cultures and interests collide and gold can buy both life and death, the Witcher Adventure Game is a digital adaptation of CD Projekt Red's board what game. What is, oh, is this a board in the game? Dark fantasy universe of the critically acclaimed Witcher video games. Go online and explore the world with other Witcher fans, or invite your friends and play in hot seat mode. Choose the hero who best oh, fits your style. Okay, Players we're gonna learn some Rivia, names. Monster Slayer Extraordinaire, Triss Merigold, Cunning Sorceress, Young oh. Sigrid, Fierce Dwarven Warrior, or Dandelion, Roguish Bard, and use their unique skills to drop okay. everything that stands between you and victory. This trailer Find wasn't that useless. <laughs> use potent magic, call on your charm, or try your hand at diplomacy. The Witcher Adventure Game will quench your thirst for questing in an epic dark My thirst fantasy has world. been quenched. Featuring over 280 cards and 30 monsters, the game offers vast replayability and promises gripping adventures every time you launch it. Work with your friends to achieve common goals, or play it dirty, doing everything in your power to complete your secret agenda. I would Hunt play monsters, dirty. <laughs> pursue challenging quests, and spin a different riveting tale every time you play. The Witcher Adventure Game. Out now. Boo mobile. Boo mobile. But it's on Steam, so. Okay. Interesting. I feel like this trailer, I mean, I know it was just for a board game or a, a digital board game. I think you played on Steam. But it talks a little bit more about the political parts of The Witcher, which is all about, I mean, the driving of gold, power, riches. I think that's kind of what drives even our world today. But it shows the world of The Witcher, which I think is interesting because it kind of gives you this view of all of the different uh, regions or powers that are kind of facing each other. <laughs> okay, one big insight. The girl that he was in the river with in The Witcher... Two trailer? Yeah, that's the Witcher 2 trailer. It's not the monarch's daughter. Everybody has red hair, okay? Who knows? But his love interest is actually Triss Marigold, who's a sorceress. So that's one big insight. But it also shows, I mean, like I said before, the whole political bashing that people are trying to do behind the scenes of all of this whole monster invasion. I still don't know really where the monsters uh, play a part in all of this. But yeah, anyways, that's kind of what I've learned out of this trailer. Not too much we can learn. Uh, we're going to be moving on to the next one. So we are moving on to The Witcher 3, which is a wild hunt. So I think there's going to be a lot of good nuggets of information we can pull out of this one. So I think The Witcher 3 has a few other expansions that we'll watch in a sec. But yeah, we're going to start with the main one, Wild Hunt hunt okay i think i got that right fingers crossed let me know in the comments whether i screw this up <laughs> yes we know it's a great game wolves asleep amidst the trees but 
hearts all a swaying in the breeze But one soul lies anxious wide awake Fearing all manner of cool hugs and raves Is that Triss? Nice tune. Been a while since I heard it last. Folk have forgotten it. Got other things on their mind. Things like me. They paid me for you. Oh, I think that's oh, the times past. The lady the from the Witcher one. one would convince a Witcher to take this contract. Times have changed. Love doesn't always work out the way you want it to. Still on this stuff, eh? Okay, maybe my theory about changing this to daylight is wrong. <laughs> Although I see the sun now, or is that the moon? Glitter bomb. <laughs> oh, it is. She's real thirsty. coming out right no it's the moon plot twist he dies at the beginning This is hard mode. Hard mode. Okay, I'm gonna start this one. <laughs> this is a tough one. Um, but I, I will say, great battle scene. Kudos to whoever directed that. That was excellent. I really enjoyed it. Uh, glitter bomb and all. <laughs> but I don't think it's actually Triss, who I think is his love interest, because Triss had green eyes and this uh, lady had blue eyes. I actually, I don't know if I'm gonna go off of a whim here and say that this person is the same red-haired girl from The Witcher 1. And the reason why I think that is because uh, they talked about a contract, which I think a contract was created in The Witcher 1 for Geralt to slay her, or not slay her, sorry, to remove the curse. Um, and I, I think she was cursed again. 
I don't know if maybe the curse made her evil, but she had to go, right? Like she was probably doing something ill or bad for some people. Also, okay, I thought that those vials that our boy Gerald is so addicted to, he needs to cut that down. I originally thought that it transforms day into night, night into day. I don't know if I, I'm kind of like half on that theory now because maybe it's just a pot. Like maybe it's a pot that gives him special abilities because um, when he did drink it, his blood turned acidic. Uh, so maybe that's kind of how he killed her where she bit his neck, drank some blood, and then it, you know, ingested in her body, went through her intestines, all that stuff, and then it ended up burning her inside out. So yeah, I'm kind of half on my theory about turning day into night, but I still am not parting from it because it transitioned to day very quickly, but I don't know if it's just time elapsing or whether it's the vial. I don't really know how a vial that he takes in could probably adjust the universe, so... Um, yeah, maybe I'll kind of part. I'll step a bit further back from that theory. One thing I did like about this fight was that, I mean, it showed a lot of different weapons and arsenal that Gerald has. So he has glitter bombs. Yay, glitter bombs. He has, I think he had a crossbow or a bow and arrow. I didn't really see how he shot her. He has his sword. He has some sort of magical abilities and he has these crack valves that, I I need to taste one of these valves. They look a bit wild. He has these vials, um, and I think that's all I really saw in it. But the reason why I liked this fight is because it also showed that Gerald is as, he isn't as resilient as one would think he is. He's still prone to getting killed. He can get killed really easily. He's a human with special abilities. So yeah, I kind of liked that. I mean, he ended up also getting wounded from this battle, which I think is great. I mean, not great, but (laughs) again, it demonstrates a little bit more about who he is. Um, I will say though, there's a scene at the end of this trailer where he's running off into a kingdom. So I don't know if he was, I don't want to say the kingdom hired him to get rid of this girl because again, he's not a mercenary and he made that very clear in the Witcher 2 trailer, but maybe he did it on behalf of someone there. Maybe he wanted to protect them or save them, but it feels like he's going to this town to maybe start his journey. One other thing I want to point out, there was a flock of birds chasing him after. I'm just having my God of War hat on where Odin sent uh, crows or ravens after Kratos. Maybe those birds are watching Geralt as he's pursuing his next journey or his next adventure, and they're going to report to the big boss. (laughs) So because this game is called Wild Hunt, I almost feel as though it's taking maybe a pivot away from the whole political aspect that I was talking about before. And it's kind of bringing it back into um, the monster world where he's, I mean, this is his destiny. He wanted to be a, a witcher when he grew up, right? So he's it's bringing it back or tying it back to the whole monster theme, maybe about him destroying some of the biggest monsters that are a threat to humanity. Because I feel like he doesn't really work for anybody. So maybe he just does it in protection of the human race. Uh, uh, so that's what I think this game is about. Just him killing monsters and looting them. Uh, maybe I shouldn't forget the fact that she transformed back into a human after. So... Maybe these monsters really are a concoction built by humans. They still really didn't explain, I think the, was it the conjunction of the two spheres that they talked about in the first trailer? They haven't really explained that in these trailers. So there's something causing humans to transform into these monsters and he's slaying them. So anyways, hopefully we learn a little bit more about that. Maybe I have to play the game to figure it out, but there's something transforming them. It's just... Ugh, I have this feeling. Okay, we're going to move on to the next one, which is The Witcher 3 Hearts of Stone, which I think is a DLC or expansion or something, but let's move on to that one. Hope there's an intense battle scene again. That was super cool. <laughs> We know it's a great game. Greetings, Geralt. Remember me? We met in White Orchard. I helped you find Yennefer. It seems you need my help again. Do 
do you want my help? It's a deal. Is that the dude who slices heads? Let me tell heads? you a story. It's about a man worse than most. A man who refuses to pay his debts. Well struck, Witcher. But perhaps you'd care to tell me why you meddled in a matter not yours. Ooh. Indeed, but it's not what folk imagine. Not dying does not mean eternally living your life to the full. So it's a curse. Okay, I was right. <laughs> you must be careful what you wish for, for there are consequences. You need to get into the vault. We break in, each day what we need. You one I can count on. You wish to see the lady of the house? See how I've reeled her in? Now don't fuck this up. Okay. Oh. Who was under the mask? Or the hood? I need to see. <laughs> Okay, here is my expert opinion on this one. Oh, these are getting harder as they go. Okay, so we see a revival of a character, um, the bald dude. I think he was in The Witcher 2, where they were talking about the king's assassinations. I think uh, he was the dude who said, I work alongside non-humans. I think that's him. They look so similar. <laughs> I mean, he's just bald. That's probably the only similarity they have. Okay, so I feel so he is coming back. I was right about monsters being kind of created. So it looks like there's two sides of the monsters, ones that are being born. So I think those are the ones that are more relative to animals, I'm gonna say off of a whim. And then there's alternatively another set of monsters that get transformed. So they're humans that undergo a transformation. And I think they under go a transformation from curses. I think that's what I've gathered. So when you get a curse, you turn into a monster. And I think that's what happened to the lady with red hair in The Witcher 1. Um, the lady in the previous trailer, I think she was the same lady, but uh, I think she also underwent a curse which transformed her into a monster. So I think there's also that kind of level of monsters to recognize. Now, I'm also going to say this game specifically, or this DLC, it looks like they're trying to obtain something. And I'm gonna go and say that th what they're trying to obtain is actually an immortality curse. And the reason I say that is because there's, I mean, a dude here that's immortal. But I also saw a clip with these, uh, these people with masks. So they have these silver masks and one of them has a king crown on him. So I think that's where it kind of brings in the whole political aspect where people want this power to obviously be immortal. And the kings, the king of some other area is coming to obtain the power for himself because maybe he personally wants to be immortal. Um, so I think that's what Hearts of Stone is technically called. So Hearts of Stone, in my opinion, is going to be the curse name that makes you immortal. Where our boy Gerald fits in this i think uh he might have gotten mixed in it to kill the guy who is cursed with the immortality curse um, and maybe just destroy that curse altogether because i mean although some people may seek out immortality is it always a good thing i think there's people who will use it for ill intentions of course so i think that's kind of where all of this ties in so you as gerald is trying to destroy the curse of immortality kill the guy who's immortal and uh, maybe protect it from these other things or powers or armies or whatever just trying to get it <laughs> did i get it i don't know i, I think i'm that one was kind of hard to unwrap gerald has these new scars on his face i think it says like a sg i don't know if that's any significance or maybe i'm just seeing it wrong but it was glowing at the beginning and giving him pain so maybe he inherited a curse from one of his battles like a main battle from the previous wild hunt game and it's kind of just like residually holding him down i don't know where this curse comes into play but he's cursed 
Okay, he's cursed, and he didn't down any of his vials yet, because I think they're pots. Okay, let's actually move on to the next one. Uh, it is... Oh, it's the last one. Blood and Wine, which is another DLC in The Witcher 3, I believe. So let's move on to that. Do they really have to start every trailer with uh, a ratings? life is best described using simple words. Honor... Wisdom, valor. The virtues we cultivate were bestowed upon us. They became a code, our code. Some say we strayed from the path of virtue, and a god sent the beast to teach us a lesson. I say we simply hire a beast slayer. Enter Gerald. <laughs> Don't let them fool you into thinking it's just another contract. This land has never seen such unspeakable evil. They need many witchers to solve that problem. Exactly how I remembered it. Okay. I think I got this one. I got it. I got it. <laughs> okay, this is a DLC, right? So I think part of this DLC was Gerald travels to this new land, and in the land, he starts to get contracts for people who are corrupt within the city. And I actually feel that those powers that are corrupt are actually the people running the city. I feel as though they might have used the curses to make themselves stronger. And eventually it overtook the city itself, which is why they brought in Gerald. Um, I think it's interesting at the end how he's kind of sitting on the throne with uh, a monster kind of overlooking him. Mm, I... I don't want to say he becomes the king, but maybe that signifies that he's uh, kind of having a big impact on the city where he can kind of be a standing king because he's doing favors for royalty of cleaning up their mess or cleaning up a mess within the city. So yeah, I, I just really think this DLC was just about like eradicating any monster beings within the city. That wraps up all of the Witcher trailers. Here's my expert opinion on what the hell's going on in this game. <laughs> oh, this is such a doozy. Okay, so we know Gerald is a Witcher, of course, and I don't know if the Witchers are a race or maybe just, uh, you know, you take upon this occupation when you want to grow up. But Witchers, we know they are, you know, they have great fighting abilities. They know a bit of magic. I also feel as though witchers have knowledge around how to slay specific types of monsters. So that kind of contributes to your expertise in the field, for lack of a better way of saying it. I wish they kind of tied together um, the, the queen from Thronebreaker a little bit more because we did see Geralt in the scene of when he protected the queen. I think that ties back into my whole political aspect of kings, corruption within kind of that elite layer <laughs> now i'm just talking about modern times the people that are running the ships okay of each one of the towns like kings or whatever ulterior powers there are there's a lot of corruption there and i feel as though gerald is kind of getting pulled into that oftentimes but it's not his main focus because he still likes to kind of navigate around the world and do what he does best which is slay monsters i think as long as it kind of holds true to his morals he's gonna go in that direction and do it so I think overall the game is about him killing shit, but getting tied up in political uh, agendas at the same time, which is, <laughs> I mean, that's like today's world, right? <laughs> One thing I still feel a bit unsure about is Gerald's abilities. Like he has these cat eyes or snake eyes, which I don't know if that's a trait of um, witchers or if that's just him specifically, if he has some sort of past that uh, kind of haunts him which is why he, you know, downs those hardcore vials. Yeah, I'm gonna say there's probably something that he 
specifically has or else i mean they could have made a witcher game about any witcher right but it's specifically around gerald so i'm gonna say he has some sort of uh there was something that happened to him in his past life which made him have these specific types of abilities if there was a next witcher game i'm gonna say again he's gonna continue going on eradicating the monster race but again he's gonna get tied up in some political mess because you know politics always do that stuff um, and obviously these are the medieval times, so it's all about conquering and, you know, taking over land and getting to be the richest and all this other stuff. So I don't think that agenda still changes as we move forward in this storyline. Would I try this game? Yeah, I actually think I would. I probably would skip some of the side games and stick to Witcher 1, 2, and 3. I heard it's open world and I love open world games. There's so much to explore there. I also think the combat in this game would be rather fun. I have not watched any gameplay, but just seeing that Gerald has so much different arsenals underneath his belt, I suspect it's pretty intense. It could get pretty intense. So uh, that's another reason. Also, I kind of have a slight obsession with medieval times. I don't know why. I just think it's really neat and cool. So I do strive towards medieval stuff a little bit more. Uh, and I guess the last reason, it has romance. <laughs> I'm a sucker for romance. I just beat Tales of Arise and oh, the end, ugh, so lovely, so lovely. That wraps up today's video. Did I nail it? I think I did. My expert opinion was uh, pretty on point, at least in my own hypothesis. <laughs> but let me know down in the comments. Also, if you are new here, consider leaving a subscribe or you can like the video, whatever you're feeling today, I'm totally okay with that. To be honest, this video didn't make me sweat too much. I was very nervous reviewing the Metal Gear Solid franchise. If you are a Metal Gear Solid fan, I'll go ahead and link the video here for you. And if you're not a Metal Gear Solid fan, I have some other videos that might interest you, so I'll link that playlist over here. I'll just say one thing, get ready to be surprised. <laughs> I'll also link my socials down below. Go ahead, give me a follow, creep me, totally up to you. Otherwise, I will see you in a new video soon. As always, have a great day, gamers.